Today we're in Job chapter 2. We saw in chapter 1 that God allowed Satan to come after Job and he took his family, his children, he took his flocks, his herds, and, and Job was left, well, pretty much penniless. And yet he didn't curse God, he didn't blame God. He, in fact, if you remember from chapter 1 that he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And so Satan goes back to heaven and he asks God, hey, yeah, but you know, I can touch all his stuff, but if I touched him, if, if you let me touch him physically, personally, yeah, he, he would curse you. And so this is the story of, will a man trust God or a woman trust God in the midst of even physical calamity, sickness, and you know, your health goes bad. And so the Lord says, there's no one else like Job on the face of the earth. I mean, what a great thing for God to say about someone. Wouldn't you love for him to say that about you? There's no one else like him. And so he says, go after him. And so he does. Listen to what happened. Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he, speaking of Job, took for himself a potsherd, a piece of pottery, to, to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. And his wife told him, just curse God and die, but he won't do it. And this is a wonderful picture of, of Job trying to walk through trusting God in the midst of not only losing all his wealth, but now losing his health. And everyone else is trying to tell him what to do. In fact, he's got three friends that come to sit with him and to counsel him and to talk with him. There's a guy named Eliphaz, there's a guy named Bildad, and there's a guy named Zophar. And they, they make their way to Job and listen to what it says. When they, when they looked at him, they didn't even recognize him. And they sat down with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very, very great. So all they did was sit there. And you know, sometimes when people are suffering or in the midst of grief, the best thing to do, instead of trying to tell them all your answers or give them some kind of verbal comfort, is just to be there. And that's how it begins with Job in chapter two. He's lost everything and now his health. And God in this whole book is allowing this massive test to come into Job's life. And Job passes the test, but it takes a long, long time. And he has these friends. And the first thing they do, and, and I would encourage this even if you have friends that are going through difficult times, just go to them. You don't have to have all the answers, but just your presence, just sitting there sometimes, means all the world to somebody that they know you care because you showed up. And this is what's happening with Job. He's in the midst of an amazing test and we will traffic through all the way to chapter 42.